Hi ho, Tudor minded people. It's Philadelphia Carrie for Tudor Time Machine. The word I share with you this week is mickle. In all things, I would have a mickle. A mickle of beauty, a mickle of wit, a mickle of admirers, a mickle of all of it. Oh, I rhymed. What wit! And yet, I do reconsider myself. For I would not have a mickle of envy, or a mickle of doubt, or a mickle of ill fortune, or a mickle of pox. No, I would not. I do not wish any pox at all. Who is it who has been talking of the mickle of pox? A pox on pox. Oh, my peace is disturbed with all this talk of pox. Mickle. How now, Tudor Files? What think you? If you're new here, I'm Gage. I'm Jessica. And we're here with Philadelphia Carey for Tudor Word of the Week. Don't miss a word. And listen to the Tudor Time Machine Story Project. Jessica reads a chapter of Time's Riddle, and then my dear friends discuss the history behind the mystery. How diverting! So subscribe on YouTube and give me a like. Thank you so much for listening. And we want to thank Feedspot for naming our podcast one of the top 10 Tudor podcasts on the web. Number two, to be exact. Tudor Files are just an amazing bunch. Every one of you has the wit of Rosalind and the heart of Cordelia. Philadelphia, can you give us the spelling of Mickle, our word of the week? It is spelled M-I-C-K-L-E. Mickle. And it means a large quantity or a great amount. And so I beg you to heed my words. I do not want a Mickle of pox. No one wants you to have a mickle of pox, or any pox at all. We wish you to have a mickle of health. So this word has always caused confusion. There was a famous proverb in the 16th century, many a little makes a mickle. That doesn't really seem like a (laughs) proverb to me, because many small amounts put together make a large amount. That just seems like a statement of the obvious. I mean, it's a proverb, even if it's not a very good one. (laughs) I guess people liked it. Okay. (laughs) But when people said the proverb, they would alter it. And they started saying, many a mickle makes a muckle. And then that led to the belief that mickle meant a little and muckle meant a great deal. But it was all a confusion because mickle means a great deal. Mickle, our word of the week, is in a play that is all about confusion. So it's well placed. (laughs) It's in Shakespeare's A Comedy of Errors. Comedy of Errors is really funny. But it's one of those plays that doesn't seem like it should work on the page or when you hear the synopsis of it. But it really does. It's a play about mistaken identities and twins. So the two male romantic leads are twins. And their two comic servants are also twins, and that leads to all kinds of crazy mix-ups. And this play was considered one of Shakespeare's first plays, and it was a huge hit. The Christmas hit of 1594. (laughs) In this time period, the English are so obsessed with things that are classical. And this play was adapted from the Roman playwright Plautus' comedy, which was called The Menechmi. And that's also about twins and mistaken identity. And Shakespeare not only used Roman comedy, but he also incorporated elements from Commedia dell'arte, which was incredibly popular at this time. Now we think of Commedia as being clownish. But in this time period, Commedia was considered the most refined theater style of the European world. Philadelphia, will you tell us the plot of the comedy of errors? Indeed, I shall try. A lovely noble woman has twin boys, and her husband is so delighted he finds a newborn set of twin boys to be his own son's servants. Twin boy masters and twin boy servants. So diverting. But sadly, mother, father, sons and servants are separated in a great storm at sea. Years later, the father, son and servant go in search of their lost mother, brother, and other servant. And by a fortuitous coincidence, the father and son and servant are swept from their boats onto the shores where their mother, brother, and other servant live. But no one in the town knows that they are there. 
oh, there is such a blustering about by the townspeople, for the brothers are confused for one another, and the servants are mistaken for one another. But in the end, all is set right. Reading this play, it's ridiculous. But in performance, it's impossible not to adore these foolish, so foolish characters. Despite everything, these characters have a lot of heart. And in the scene where our word of the week is used, the servants meet each other for the first time. And because Shakespeare wanted to make it super funny and also a little confusing, purposefully, I think, both the servants have the same name, Dromeo. And both the masters have the same name, Antipolis. Each set of twins has an Antipolis and a Dromeo. Possible? Unlikely? Funny? If it's yes, done right. If it's done right. Our word of the week is used by Dromeo when he meets the other Dromeo. What does he say, Philadelphia? The fellow is surprised. He says, Villain, thou hast stolen both mine office and my name. The one ne'er got me credit, the other mickle blame. If thou hadst been Dromeo today in my place, thou wouldst have changed thy face for a name, or thy name for an ass. This is so different from the Revenger's tragedies we've been talking about, or something like Hamlet. Shakespeare isn't showing us his great understanding of the human condition in this play. Oh, my dear Gage, he is. For is not the need to laugh essential to the human condition? It is, Philadelphia. Master Shakespeare loves to make us laugh. Indeed, even when a play is very sad, he shall make us smile, even as we feel the tears begin to well. You wrong him, Gage, you wrong him. Master Shakespeare, wherever you may be, I make my deepest apology. You rhymed. So I did. How diverting. I wish all our Tudor files a mickle of laughter every day. So give he Tudor files, bring some 16th century sauce to your vocabulary with mickle. Listen in next time. Don't miss a word. Subscribe on YouTube and give me a like. <laughs>